that's good too. All right, hi everyone. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the uh, Wikidata project. Wikidata is a uh, project run by Wikimedia Germany uh, in close cooperation with the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, the Wikimedia Foundation, of course, being uh, the people who run Wikipedia among uh, a bunch of other projects. I want to start off uh, with uh, Wikimedia's mission statement. Basically, uh, Wikimedia is all about bringing knowledge to the people, right? Bringing the, making the world's knowledge accessible to, to everyone. And I guess Wikipedia is doing a pretty good job at that. But uh, Wikipedia doesn't have all the answers. There's a lot of information there, but actually answering specific questions using that information is not always easy. You may have to read a bunch of pages. And well, maybe computers could help us with that. The problem with that is computers can't really understand text, right? It all looks like gibberish to them. Um, maybe, maybe they're able to pick out a few numbers and extract a few facts, but on the whole, text is not horribly useful to computers. So what we want to do with Wikidata is we want to build a database of the world's knowledge that everyone can edit. Basically, kind of like Wikipedia, where, you can, where everyone can contribute text, um, we would have a database of the world's knowledge that is actually reusable in a, in a uh, machine-readable way. So how is this new? Doesn't, doesn't anything like that already exist? Well, not really. You know, pretty much everyone has seen the, the info boxes on Wikipedia, the nice little boxes you have on the right side of a Wikipedia article like this one. Um, and people assume that the information in there actually comes from a database and can be accessed and stored and, and shared and stuff like that. But in fact, it's all just text. And it's text actually maintained using this horrible mess of markup with lots of formatting templates and all kinds of crap in there. And if you go on, um, to Wikipedia pages in other languages, you will find that the information is, well, kind of the same, but not always really the same. And maybe it even disagrees, and it is formatted in a different way. And actually, the mechanisms used to uh, maintain this and to actually show this information in the info boxes is going to be different. Different templates, different formatting mechanisms, different conventions, all that kind of stuff. Again, in Russia, it's a little bit different yet. So um, we have Wikipedias in about 280 languages. And uh, it's kind of annoying to have this kind of stuff over and over and over again. So we really want to fix this, especially since if you look at Wikipedia in a language with not so many speakers, or actually with not so many speakers that have internet access, you will find that often these pages don't have uh, this kind of information at all. There's just no one there to, to maintain that. So one project that has been existing for a while is DBpedia. Um, DBpedia is trying to make the information from the info boxes, like the stuff we saw here, accessible in a machine readable way they have they basically try to um, grab the the data you have in the info boxes and uh, convert it to RDF and make it uh, accessible via a web API via a sparkle endpoint and they're moderate, moderately successful with that they're the pretty important part of uh, the the web of linked open data but well, yeah, the, the way that DBpedia works is it mines Wikipedia for this information and then makes it available to others. What we want to do is we want to be a data provider that uh, allows everyone to directly work with structured information that is shared by other people. So we want to provide our data to Wikipedia, to DBpedia, to whoever cares to use it. We want to directly maintain structured information about the world. And yeah, that's, that's one difference to, to DBpedia. I also think that the, the way we represent this information and uh, the, the details kind of puts us apart from most other projects that try to provide this kind of information. I will talk about that in a minute. First, I want to show a little bit of what we, have, what we actually have to do in order to provide this kind of service. Um, the first thing we actually 
have to make sure is that we actually know what we are talking about in the sense that if we have multiple, if, if we have pages about the sun on Wikipedia in different languages, we kind of have to know that they all refer to the same thing, the same topic. Um, and the way that we do this currently is we have this, this, this uh, links on the left-hand side of the article. Uh, I don't know who of you ever noticed these, but the, these actually list the languages that, in which there is also an article about this topic. We call those interlanguage links. And the thing about the interlanguage links is that every article in every language has to explicitly link to all the others. And more or less manually maintain this list. So you get uh, like a messy graph like this, just with not four nodes, but you know, 200 nodes, 250 nodes, depending on how many uh, languages actually cover this topic. The topic sun is one of the, mo one of the uh, topics that is covered in nearly every language. That's what it looks like. Uh, this is just a small part of the total list. And um, this list, again, is maintained in each and every one of these pages. Um, and they are kept in sync using, using bots because you really cannot maintain this by hand. And if you look at the, um, the recent changes list of, of some small wiki, basically where you see all the edits that happen on the wiki, if you do this on a small wiki, you will notice um, that actually the majority of edits is done by bots just to maintain these crappy lists. Um, when, when I tried this out on a, on a fairly small Wikipedia, Actually, the, the, first, the first page I saw of, of changes had no real edit. It's just bot edits maintaining the interlanguage links. And even worse, if you look at the small wikis, um, you will notice that the actual textual content represented by the green bar is sometimes less than the, the number of characters needed to maintain these inter, inter wiki links, which is the red bar. So this is really silly, right? We, we really don't need that kind of redundancy. So the idea is that the first thing we will do with Wikidata is centralize this information. Have a central store where uh, we maintain a list of all the Wikipedia articles that cover the respective topic. The, the topic itself is identified by some nonsensical number, um, but it is by, because it, it, it references the Wikipedia pages in all the languages that cover this topic, it is very well defined as a topic. So this is what it looks like um, on, our on the current prototype system. Um, well, the, the list of languages and uh, pages in that language, it's, it's not very sexy. It's just a JavaScript-based interface for editing, maintaining this list. Uh, it's just a start for um, it's just a start for the uh, Wikidata project. OK, sorry. Basically, once we have this list on Wikidata, right, we enter the, we enter the links here, we can show this list again on every page that covers this topic in all the languages without having to maintain that list in the page. Right, this, are, there, are there any questions so far? Where's the guy with the microphone? He went away. There's the guy with the microphone. Are there any questions so far? Is it totally clear what I'm talking about? Okay, one, good. So my question would be, uh, there are languages which um, have different concepts. Like uh, in some languages, um, the arm and your hand are not two separate words or concepts, but they just have one concept for that. How do you resolve that? Um, we would resolve it in the same way we resolve it on Wikipedia. Because, basically because in some places these are considered different things, there will be separate nodes for them, and there also may be a concept that covers both, and then we will have a relation between them. Maybe there is just no word in some languages for, I don't know, hand and arm together, or I don't know, in, in English you have uh, neck and throat. There's no equivalent to the German Hals. It doesn't exist. Okay, so there's just no English word for it. It's fine. Or maybe we'll ha we would use uh, some medical term to, to identify it. 
Um, it's not a real problem because the actual identifiers are, um, are just numeric. And as for, we, we will try to provide, or it is possible to provide um, terms and descriptions for these things in all the languages. But if they don't exist in some language, well, okay, then they're not there. Yeah, I, we will see some examples of the multilingual uh, interface later. More questions for now? Okay. So I hope that I can get to the interesting stuff now. The next question is, do we, do we agree, right? Or what do we do if you don't? Because people don't always agree on these facts. Because facts often really aren't. At least not, they are not as, as simple as some people like them to be. If you look at the page uh, about Berlin and the German language Wikipedia, the, the population is given with 3,510,032. If you look on a different wiki like the Russian, you get a number of 3,479,740. They give different sources, they give slightly different points in time. Uh, one of, is from 2011, the other from the start of 2012. I don't think so many people actually moved into Berlin in that period of time, so maybe the, the method is also kind of different, and you know, who, who knows? So who's going to say which, which number is actually better? Um, and the solution to this is to actually not just report the population number in the database, but to actually record statements. What we are collecting is not facts. What we are collecting is statements. Who said, who said what about what, when, and where, right? Um, so if I want to give the population of Berlin, I would also, in, in addition to the, the plain number, I would also give a point in time, and perhaps a method, and perhaps some other additional information. And for this entire claim of a fact, I would, I would give sources. Um, and of course, the, the entire thing we call a statement. And I can, of course, have multiple statements about the population of Berlin um, that kind of compete. We, um, th this can be used to model disagreement or disputed values. This can also be, modeled, uh, this can also be used to model uh, historical development um, or the results of applying different methods of measurement and all, all this kind of stuff. So in practice, this is, this is just a mock-up. We don't yet have a prototype of, uh, of this, but uh, well, we are getting close. Um, this is what it would look like in practice, right? You, you would just give these two numbers, um, annotate it with, with all the qualifiers, annotate it with the respective sources, with the possibility to add even more. And right, this was a case of two competing numbers for the population. But if, um, we, we can also represent historical values, right? The, the phone prefix for Berlin changed in 1973. So we have the new value and we have the old value tagged as such. And once we have this, uh, this level of information in the Wikidata database, we can, of course, show it on Wikipedia. All the information in the info boxes would be pulled from Wikidata and shown on Wikipedia along with all the, the qualifiers, along with all the source information, um, and in some cases also along with um, a, a hint that there is a disagreement or something like that. I want to uh, linger a little bit more in this data model because this, this is what you usually have with linked data. This is what you have in the semantic web as it was envisioned, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago. Um, you can have, you have a thing, right, Berlin, you have a property, population, and you have a value. Okay, you can also have two values. Now, which one do we use? Uh, how do we decide? Do we have any additional information to that? Uh, usually we don't, right? But uh, in the data model we are developing, you would at least have this, where you have additional information about um, the individual values, so they are qualified, and they are also sourced. So you also you you can uh, actually 
assess which which number you want to use by looking at the sources. Or you can actually uh, ver verify that these people actually said this or these institutions. Um, one interesting side note here is that the publication that is referenced is itself an, a, a data item in um, in Wikidata, or at least maybe. So these uh, the these um, source references can be. Pretty, pretty complex, pretty deep. If you look at this, then uh, this is pretty far from what you would get from DBpedia. This is pretty far from what you get from most uh, RDF-based uh, RDF linked data endpoints. Um, this is much more complex. It, had, it's, it has much more depth than what you get from most information systems. And uh, But this is really necessary. This is actually necessary to just keep the level of information that we have on Wikipedia, right? If, if we would drop all this additional information, uh, Wikipedia authors would say, well, we can't use that, right? We, we can't use that number if we don't have a source. Uh, so it is, uh, for, for in order to maintain the depth of information, the depth of knowledge we have on Wikipedia, it is absolutely necessary to have a, a complex data model like this. It, of course, makes it difficult to use this kind of information for... Um, well, in, in the context of, um, of, of the linked data web we, as we have it now, it is, it is rather hard to use this as a, a semantic web resource in the classical sense because you cannot readily apply any kind of inference or reasoning to this. We will, of course, provide a mapping to RDF. This can be expressed in RDF, but the resulting RDF will be, well, rather cumbersome to use. Um, so what you will, would really need to use this with a reasoner as a projection that gives you just the values you're interested in and then, then you can do this. And that, that's of course possible and this is actually something that I would hope that DBpedia can perhaps uh, provide because they have some experience with this. Anyway, um, besides disagreeing on things, there's also the aspect of, well, can we, can we understand what is written there, right? Uh, which basically means how do we deal with all the languages. As I said, we have uh, Wikipedia in about 280 languages, so we actually need to be able to describe the, the, the data items, the entities on Wikidata also in all these languages. And at the very basic level, for each data item we have a label, we have a description, and we have any number, numbers of aliases. And um, these can be provided in as many languages as you like. You can just switch the entire user interface to German or to Chinese or to Hebrew or whatever you like. And you will then see these values in that language if it is, exists or you are invited to add them if they don't exist. Um, this, of course, also would switch the representation of numbers, for instance, also the representation of dates and, and all these nice localization features. MediaWiki already has a very, very powerful localization engine that covers a lot of these things already. All we need to do is actually apply it uh, to, to our data records. Um, when, we ha when we are referencing other entities, or no, if, if there are properties of a uh, data item like Berlin that are themselves data items, like, you know, the, the property mayor refer referencing some person um, will, it, it's also represented by a, an internal reference uh, in, in Wikidata, of course. We would not be enter the string Klaus Wolverite. We would actually create a reference to the respective data entry, which of course means that um, when showing this on a wiki, we get the full name in the respective language, right? If I look at the page in, in Russian, I will see Klaus Wolverite in, uh, in the Cyrillic spelling, simply because there is a data item about the guy on uh, Wikidata, and it has a localized uh, representation of, of the label. Right, so we can feed the info boxes from Wikidata. We can create the interlanguage inter links from Wikidata. Um, the, th the next step after that will be lists. Wikipedia has tons and tons of lists. For instance, lists of people, 
but also a lot more detailed list, like the list of people by occupations. This is a category of lists of people by occupation, right? Um, we even have lists of lists of lists. I think there's even a category of lists of lists of lists. Um, Wikipedia has wacky, wacky lists, yeah, right? Lists of animals with fraudulent diplomas, list of wartime cross-dressers, list of inventors killed by their own inventor. I like this one. This is great. It actually exists in several languages. This is awesome. Um, I'm afraid that uh, Wikidata will not be able to help very much with that kind of list. But there's also hundreds and hundreds of rather boring lists, like the list of countries by GDP. I think there's like eight variants of this page. So this is the, this is the basic one. We have also the list of countries by GDP per capita, and so on, and so on. And these pages mainly consist of tables like this, and they are all maintained by hand in each language. Great fun. Um, so what we really want to do with Wikidata is allow people to generate these, these lists automatically because it's just, you know, it, it's silly to ask people to maintain this kind of information by hand. And in time, we hope that it will also be, become possible to automatically generate nice and pretty and handy uh, visualizations, graphs, charts, and so on using this, this data. Actually, um, we will hopefully be able to plug into the existing software components for a semantic media wiki, which already have these visualization components. All right, so um, questions at this point? One there. Uh, so going from the technical part to, to your vision for Wikidata, let's say that I have lots of data, maybe interesting data about the environment in Berlin, or maybe the traffic. Uh, in your vision, does Wikidata host my data and syndicate it uh, around, or do I get into those hurdles that uh, belong to the Wikimedia world of the citation needed and everything has to be on a f certified by a third party? And how how would you uh, how would you react maybe to me? Like maybe I'm a quantify self uh, enthusiast and I want to publish my um, quantified self data, so how much I sleep, or how I wait, or stuff like that. I'd like to know better what's your overall vision, what kind of data do you want, and what kind of data you would uh, generally reject. This, yeah, th this is basically a question that should not be posted to the software development team, but to the community, which will hopefully at some point exist. Right now the software is not there yet, so there's also no community yet. Um, but the project will very likely mostly recruit its, uh, its community from Wikipedia. So I would expect the, the, the standards and ideas to be pretty much the same. Um, one, one thing that I expect to be different is uh, all this stuff about notability and scope because we, by necessity, have a much finer granularity in Wikidata. So a lot of things that would not warrant uh, its own article on Wikipedia would be in there. Um, if you, as an enthusiast, collect data sets about, I don't know, environmental things in Berlin, um, Wikidata would not be the place to host your data as such. But I could very well imagine that people would use you as a reference when importing data sets. And you would, you would just be one source. It, it could, however, be that uh, other sources would be preferred or would be um, considered to have more authority because, I don't know, they, they're run by the government or something like that. Um, this is something to be sorted out by the community. One thing I would like to mention is that um, Wikidata is really about making the kind of information we already have in the info boxes more accessible and more useful. It is not really about importing as much data as possible. It's more about, yeah, information about information. One there, one there, one there. Yeah, this is starting to pick up. Uh, well, first of all, I think it's very needed what, what you're doing because I deal with Wikipedia all the time and the organizations drives me crazy. Uh, but uh, what I'm wondering is how, Wik where, do, where is the line drawn between Wikidata and DBpedia? Uh, are you going to be hosting APIs and uh, ways for, for people to 
to easily access the data in, uh, with their servers, or is that going to be DBpedia, or where's where's the line drawn? I imagine that we will become another source of data for DBpedia. Um, we will, of course, provide APIs for accessing the data. Um, the ability to run complex queries on the data, however, will be very limited, um, simply because of uh, performance reasons, basically. Because, I mean, I, I expect to have something between 10 and 100 million uh, data items with, I don't know, 10 to 100 properties each. Um, this is going to be a lot of data, and most of it is going to be uh, rather complex because you have all these multiple statements and sources and so on. If you try to um, push this into a triple store and run Sparkle queries on it, you're not going to have fun. So um, what I expect to happen, and I have talked with the DBpedia people about it, but there's no decision yet or anything, is that what they, they would kind of provide a projection on, on a factual basis that would simply say, okay, we know the source, we will just take all the numbers that give the source and then and then you have one number for the population of Berlin. Uh, and then we have something that we can put in our triple store and run queries on and all this kind of thing. How would the sources be sorted for uh, this kind of list that would be uh, compiled uh, automatically? Because now I think uh, the people for this list, each time they uh, also input the source, and uh, what about when you do it uh, automatically? Yeah, that things get rather... Let, let me see if I can find the example again. This is, of course, a pretty complex question. It depends on a lot of factors. Um, in, in this example, it's actually the case that the three tables you see each cover information from one source. Right, the, um, the leftmost table is uh, using the International Monetary Fund, the center one is using the World Bank, and the third one is using the CIA Factbook as a source. And you will be able to do just this uh, using, uh, using Wikidata. You can tell Wikidata, okay, give me information only from this source, and then you will get a list like this. If you do not provide that, that uh, kind of filter, you will get information from all the sources, or actually you will get all the statements that are marked as preferred. And there may be multiple statements marked as preferred. And in that case, you would simply have a disagreement. And you would probably just uh, see the number marked as, well, you, 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 would, you would actually have two numbers in, in one of these fields. If there are two sources that, are, that disagree but are both marked as, well, probably pretty good, then you would have just two numbers in the table. Any more questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh. Maybe the microphone is too far away now. Okay. Uh, okay. So my question is, uh, I missed the part of the presentation. Sorry? Okay, I missed the part of the presentation, so maybe my question uh, was answered. You know, but uh, uh, my question is that: Do you provide, uh, or do you plan to provide some uh, sort of statistics methods uh, or set of methods uh, to analyze or these data, uh, which will be there on your database? You, you're asking if we provide tools to analyze the data statistically and so on? Yes. Um, actually, we, we don't plan to provide those tools because I don't think we are actually the, the best people to develop these tools. I think uh, we will provide the data. I think the tools are already there. Some of them. Thank you. You... You were talking about how the Wikidata will import data from Wikipedia, but how about for the future? Will the person need, when someone will be creating a new page on Wikipedia about entirely new topic, will he 
input data just like now, or he'll, we, will he need to input data in Wikidata and then create the page? I'm not sure if I'm making any sense. Okay. The, the workflow in the future for entering or, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I will try to explain how it, how I imagine people will enter and change data in, in Wikidata in the future. Uh, maybe this answers your question. If I see an info box on Wikipedia right now and I want to change some value in there, I need to go into the article source code, find the info box, dig through all this template parameter craft, find the right value and change it there. And uh, of course, nothing will change in all the other languages that are showing the same value. Um, in the future, you will have an edit button in the info box. And if you click it, you will get a form where you can um, enter new values. And uh, you just save it, and the data gets saved to, uh, to Wikidata, and it will update in, in all the other wikis. For initially importing information from Wikipedia into Wikidata, uh, this is basically a migration process that is um, going to be tackled by the community, largely using semi-automated processes uh, aided by bots. You would have bots that know about specific um, info boxes. They would mine the information from them, import it into uh, Wikidata, and remove it from the uh, wiki page. There's one more question. I'd like to welcome that you, I think, have made a long, uh, uh, a good list of right design decisions like modeling uh, disagreement, for example, and uh, having references in, in the data because uh, DBPTA can't do this right so now. Sorry, I, I only understand half of what you're asking. It's okay. maybe we need to turn around one of the speakers. <laughs> like, I want to congratulate to your design decision to be able to model uh -huh. disagreement. This will actually uh, uh, solve uh, many neutral, neutral point of view problems because there, in some topics, there's no neutral yeah. point of view anymore. But uh, now this doesn't matter anymore. Um, and my question is: um, Have you ever heard of topic maps? Like, yeah, you know all this stuff. Yeah, I have heard of topic maps. Um, basically, when I showed the data model and I said that, well, this is much more complex than what you usually get from RDF, yeah, it's still much, it, I think it's still much simpler than what you would get with, with topic maps. I, I kind of feel like the, the RDF is on a very simple, basic, end of the spectrum because it all boils down to triples while topic maps are pretty far out there. Um, I have been thinking about uh, providing a direct mapping to topic maps and maybe we will. Uh, it does not seem feasible to me to use topic maps as the internal representation. Um, we are yeah, building our internal representation very much along um, thoughts about being compatible with the existing infrastructure we have at Wikimedia and uh, performance issues that you run into when you serve like 120,000 hits per, per second. So um, we are a little bit restricted in that area. But yes, I mean, we will provide an RDF mapping and providing a topic maps mapping does make sense in a way. I just don't know if we get around to it. Um, yeah, one, one more question. For, uh, one more question. Um, if I would go as a visitor to, to Wikipedia and I come to this page and have this table, would it be possible for me to, let's say, combine it with the, um, with the population? When I have, um, you know, the country, the GDP, the year, and I might want to add the yeah, yeah you, you want Wikipedia Gapminder, right? Um, it would be cool to have this. Uh, it's just not something that we are going to build right away. Um, this, again, is something that, I mean, we, we are providing open software, open interfaces, open formats. Go ahead and build it, right? We, we are waiting for it. <laughs> okay. Um, right, let me, let me um, finish my talk. There will be some, there will be time for more questions uh, in the very end. Uh, 
there's not that much left to say. I want to talk a little bit about who is actually going to benefit from this. Um, I already said how this is going to impact Wikipedia editors a little bit, but the question is really what, what, what will the effect be or what, what do we hope the effect will be besides making life a little bit easier. Um, Wikipedia has a lot of visitors. Um, and if you look at w which Wikipedia people actually vi visit, then it is very clear that people all over the world really look at the English language Wikipedia, um, even if they don't speak the language that well. Why? Well, because there's a lot of stuff there, right? And a lot of stuff that's not in other Wikipedias. Um, if, if your native language Wikipedia just doesn't cover the topic um, or is very outdated, then you're going to, well, either use the English language Wikipedia or just not have the information because you don't speak English. So one of the effects I really hope for is that smaller Wikipedias will have a very easy time at least adding info boxes to, to all the uh, central topics. Um, also, and I also hope that we will free the local editors from all the bot edits and all the craft on the pages that is not really content and basically take away the maintenance effort for all this, this overhead. Um, and we, we hope that, especially for the small wikis where there's just not that much manpower, um, this will really help to improve the, the content and make more information available to uh, the speakers of the respective language. So this is one of the hopes we have for the global impact of this in the, in the Wikipedia universe. Um, but yeah, why, why should you care, right? You, you speak English, otherwise you wouldn't be li listening to me. So uh, what about third parties? Well, it's pretty simple. There's um, a lot of web services or other services that could benefit from this information, um, starting with pages that already display something like an info box. I mean, Google recently started displaying info boxes. Um, I bet they stole this idea from Wikipedia. Actually, um, they, they mine Wikipedia for this information. They actually say so. And uh, they would have a lot, a lot easier time getting this information and getting this information with more depth. Um, for example, including actual source links uh, than they have now if they could just pull it from, uh, from Wikidata. Which I guess is also one of the reasons they pay for the damn thing. I'll come to that in the end. Um, yeah, I don't know. IMDB is an example where you have the basic information about a movie. They could just take that from, uh, from uh, Wikidata. Or some more obscure sites like the plane enthusiast site, uh, Plane Mat, where they, among a ton of other information and hundreds and thousands of uh, photographs of airliners, uh, they have this list of uh, airlines by country with all the codes and all the stuff in there. Well, we could have that on, on, on Wikidata, and any website that wants this kind of information, this kind of listing, could just use it instead of having to maintain it over and over and over again. So this is, this is the basic idea. Be a central repository for all this kind of information in the world, just as Wikipedia is the, the go-to place right now for textual information. Yeah, this is it already, actually. Um, you can get more information on wikidata.org. There's also flyers lying around on stage and some, some on the uh, chairs out there. Um, yeah, I would like to, of course, um, thank the people who donated money to make this possible, which is, uh, first, first of all, the um, Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence and then uh, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation and Google. These are institutions and, and companies that are very interested in making this kind of thing happen. I guess because they believe it's just handy to have a web service which you can ask for structured data about just about anything. Right, so more questions. One there, where did the microphone go? Yeah. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, I just wanted to know how do you see uh, efforts like Freebase, um, what they are doing, taking the information and improving? Um, yeah, that's it. 
uh, of all the projects out there, I think Freebase is actually closest to uh, what we are doing. Um, one of the large disadvantages of Freebase is actually it's not op not open source, right? Um, and it is not that easy to integrate with with other systems. Basically, the idea is, is um, quite similar. We just want to be. Uh, we we just wanted to. Well, be more tied to the to the wiki spirit, and make things like source information and things like disagreement and diversity more explicit. Have things like historical development directly embedded in the data model. These are all things that you kind of can do with Freebase too, but it's not that um, prominent. Yeah, and I, I guess if we had had the possibility to build on top of uh, of Freebase, we might have tried that. Um, but as it's not open source, um, on the one hand, and on the other hand, we are very much tied to the MediaWiki platform, to the LAMP stack, um, just because you know, we, Wiki, Wikimedia is running uh, the I don't know number four or five website in the world um, according to, to hits um, on a shoestring budget. So there's just no way that we can just, you know, build another data center and put a couple of thousand boxes in there and run some other system. It's just not going to happen. The thing, sorry, uh, the, I just wanted to comment that the thing is uh, it's funded by also by Google, you know, so it's pretty strange that Google yeah. is funding this, taking your data, closing it, so Somehow it's a bit uh, bizarre. You, well, they could just have open sourced their stuff and given it to us. Yeah, you, you ask, ask them, maybe they will. <laughs> um, I, you just mentioned LAMP stack, so I'm assuming you're using a relational database? or We are, well, MediaWiki itself runs on a relational database, and all of Wikipedia runs on, on MySQL. Um, from the, the way we are going to store the data is primarily um, as serial, serialized into JSON as blobs in the database. Because for most of the things, for, for the interwiki links, or the interlanguage links, and for the uh, info boxes, we only ever need lookup by ID. We never do need any any kind of query. So um, storing these as blobs is uh, the, the the obvious choice, especially since it allows us to use the existing mechanisms for uh, versioning content, which you have in MediaWiki for um, actually modeling these things as wiki pages, which allows us to reuse all all the infrastructure, all the permission management, all the backup mechanisms, all the important export uh, export infrastructure. So all these things are just there. Um, to allow queries on this data, we will be using uh, a different database engine, so we can actually impl implement smart queries. Uh, we have not yet decided on which one. It is probably going to be something document-oriented, um, or maybe maybe something like HBase. I don't know. Uh, it's it's not sure yet, but um, yeah, it it kind of depends on how far we want to go with the queries. Uh, and just to follow up, I'm wondering when you plan to have something uh, usable. Uh, the the functionality that just deals with the language links should be live and online on Wikipedia very soon now. I'm not going to name a date, uh, but really soon. Um, the entire project is as it stands now. And uh, w with the scope I just described, is funded until end of next March. And well, by then, I hope we have all of this online. Does your data model have units of measurements for numerical data? Yes. Cool. Yes, we do. Actually, um, there will be a data type that is kind of uh, that is something like scalar measurement, which has a unit and also a precision. We are not going to treat uh, currencies as units, though. That, yeah. <laughs> currencies are hard. 
you can have currencies as of a date as a unit. Even, even then you would need a base currency which doesn't exist. Any more, any more questions? Everything totally clear so far. Okay. Great. Then I thank you very much for listening. And maybe, maybe again next year. Thanks. Nice.